All right, all right, lovely people of the world. I am in a jolly good mood. And what does that mean? It means it's an idiot abroad time. Season one, episode eight, the last episode of the first season, Carl comes home. So it's interesting to me that they made a full length episode of just this, just Carl coming home, talking about it, seeing what's up. So let's just, let's just jump right in because I, I, I want to see this. I want to see what's up. What are we going to even talk about? What's this in The Guardian? Guardian guy, pick of the day. All right. Oh, pick of the day. This, this will be a good review, then. The conceit of this ball achingly dull series... <laughs> have, have you ever... Has your balls ever ached from watching a programme? Have you ever watched a programme and gone, don't know if I'm enjoying this, but my balls are aching. I, I ate it. This is the dullest thing. Oh, hang on. It doesn't... I, I don't know what that means. His balls are aching because the series is that dull. If, if TV that he doesn't like makes his balls ache, why, is it, why don't you turn it off quicker? <laughs> he must get a twinge and go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> The seven wonders of the world. Christ the Redeemer. The Taj Mahal. I don't know whose voice this is, but the I great really pyramid. like it. Truly man's greatest achievement. But there's one man who sees them differently. Most of the world is grim. Carl Pilkington. It's hard to let people know how bad it is. Oh, Jesus. I was ill, fed up. Want to go home? Tired and didn't like where I was. Carl, where are you going? No! Uh, I'm not staying in that room. What's on. it about? <laughs> the stuff that these eyes have seen. Oh, for fuck's sake. There's loads of things that you go, why do you do that? And they go, it's tradition. Why is this traditional Chinese massage? Ah! Your body's in proper shock. I don't like having danger in my life. <laughs> Who are you giving this all this shit? Sky one. That's TV. who we're giving all this shit TV. to. If I had a bad heart, that could have done me in. He's shit. Face great. Shit. Shit. I'm not doing any, any more anyway. It's the end of it. <laughs> Just let me go home. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I how he went to all that Mexico and he's like, yeah, I really like that place. God, God. Hello and welcome to episode eight of An Idiot Abroad uh, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the eponymous hero, Carl Pilkington. All right. I suppose this is a, was a roundup. That, was way. that the We've same watched the series. intro as, as I suppose the this Ricky is a, Gervais show? Carl Pilkington. All right. It sounded the I suppose same. this is a, a roundup. In a way. We've watched the series, we've laughed, we've cried. Stephen Merchant, I know he's like excessively tall and all that, but it's all in the legs. His, lo his legs go on forever. Because you, you have three types of extremely tall people. You have extremely tall people with a really long torso, extremely tall people with the really long legs, and then those that are just kind of evened out. And this guy, he's all legs. Just goes on forever. We got angry. I, I got bored as well. <laughs> but welcome back, Carl, because I did. You know, it's quite an adventure. I don't think. I don't remember. There was one episode that was kind of dull when it was like in Israel. Yeah, but it's pretty you good. You can see it for miles. It goes on for miles over the hills and everything. But so does the M6. It's almost like a, a you know, like a diamond in a turd. I don't see that in the brochure, do you? Shitty old nappy whizzing through the air. I tend to leave that out. The stuff that these eyes have seen... Right. ..they'll remember it. Well, it's funny you should say about your eyes, because, you know, I've been consulting your diary here. Since so the other reason I'm finding it hard to relax is that there always seems to be something going on, something to take in. I think I've blinked less since I've been here as I don't want to miss anything. So my eyes have been open longer than normal. Maybe that's why my eyes are so tired. When I was there, I was using my eyes more. When I'm here, sometimes I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> are you with me? No. What do you I mean? Am. Life here can be quite boring for your eyes. Sometimes driving. Mm. I get to some place. I, I, love, I love how they're talking about boring for the eyes and stuff, and they're just literally in like, just heaven or you know when or like Harry Potter. 
<laughs> after he died before the resurrection, where it's just all white, or when people die in shows, so it's just all white. It's the nothingness after death. And that's like where they are. There's got those three little birdies there, just kind of just because. But it's funny how they're talking about boring about the eye, and it's just nothing, nothingness. They're get in the middle of nothingness. Boring for your eyes. Sometimes oh. driving. Mm. I get to some place and they go, how did I get here? And it's because you're not really looking where you're going. While driving? No, it's only the little odd things in life that makes your eyes sort of go, oh. Well, there's been a lot of things, hasn't there? Food, you've seen some pretty grotesque things. Like Food. that fellow there who was your driver in China. Oh, man, this is incredible. Look at this lot. Thank you. She's all right. What's he having over there? Good Jesus. Does he know it's not all in one piece, that noodle? <laughs> Are we in a race? I didn't realise... <laughs> I mean, what... Why is he in a hurry? I'm in his van. Should I be getting a move on? He's meant to be giving me a lift home. <laughs> the suction on that. It's just one minute it's there. It's like opening an airplane window. It just all sucks out. <laughs> well, how we are. That's it, he's eating it. I've hardly touched this. What's he got now? I like how he's what more interested that? in the other guy's meal than his Chicken own. Chicken spinach. You don't pick a, a food by what sort of feet it's got. Just just have chicken if he wants chicken. We're paying, he could have had anything he wanted. We're paying. And he's spitting it out now, he's just spitting its nails out by the looks of things. No thanks, you're all right. I not mind it, he's been munching like Minto's in the van. He's never offered me one of them. It gets the chicken feet. Suddenly he's keen for me to have one. <laughs> he's just spitting stuff out. He's chewing on it. He's spitting on it. I, I can't eat this. <laughs> oh, see that then? Why are they it's his van. The He'll have to clean it up. <laughs> You're not having pudding, are you? See, I'm with you on that. that there's, there's no reason to eat like that. I don't think you'll ever hear of a Chinese man who starved to death. Because there's no reason to. Street food out there. I thought street food meant, you know, you have chefs on the street cooking food. They don't, they don't mean that. It's street food. Whatever's crawling about, they grab and eat. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Are they dead? Are they toads? Honest to God, that market, I thought it was a myth all that before I went. I thought they don't eat weird stuff like that because there's no need. There's loads of stuff in the world. You don't have to get to that level yet. I think even in Lost. Oh, that, that gave me the... We didn't even get to insects. <laughs> we were stuck on an island there with coconuts. At no point do you see one going off to eat a squid or a, a lizard or a, a scorpion. It never happened. <gasps> Yet there, they just... I'll have that. Not a problem. Just, just shoving them in the face. It makes me... I mean, I don't think they do I'm a celebrity to get me out of there in, in China. Because they'd go, what's the problem? It's lovely or you can eat buffy, yeah? <laughs> Not a problem for them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, this was gross. This was gross. That thing on the bus when they're all going... Yeah. <laughs> that was disgusting. It's disgusting. Doesn't matter where you're from. I don't know what you have to do over there to offend someone. He's <laughs> farting, burping, <laughs> spitting. That driver, he farted three times one morning. <laughs> no one sort of went, oh, I had a laugh about it. You dirty sod. Nothing, just carried on. But that's the way they are. In a way, are they right? Is that the way we should live? I don't know. Noise has been a big thing on the whole trip. Um, well, look, here you're complaining about all the noise I in love this. Brazil. I love this scene. The years just haven't stopped since they've been here. They've been overworked with constant, you know, drums, singing, whistles, chanting, dogs, <laughs> helicopters, gays. More massage for your ego. Gays wouldn't normally be on that list, but the one I met here just wouldn't shut up. <laughs> I love that. Now, I went to Brazil during carnival time. I had a whale of a time. I really enjoyed myself. Great. It's lively, it's vibrant, loads going on, people are in good spirits, colour, energy. You, nothing but whinging. No, because I don't like, you know, the carnival and the block parties. It's all parties for me. I've never liked them anyway. I've never really had them. I've never had a birthday party. Um, I just, when I see them, you know, like that advert for Iceland, Iceland supermarket, yeah. you see Kerry Katona and Christopher Biggins have a little bolivant. What? This is a 
Oh, I don't look at that and go, that looks like a good, good, good night. No. But you're meant to, aren't you? It's meant to give you a good feeling. Iceland supermarket, look at the fun you can have with the food. I don't know where <laughs> that party would be happening. <laughs> but I don't look at it and go, I'd love to be there. And it was the same in Brazil. I don't like same. false fun. That's what it is, false, false fun. Yeah. I don't like it when people organise stuff. Come round Thursday. Come round and have a drink and a chat. I don't know how I feel on Thursday. <laughs> but you'd never get anything done if you didn't have a bit of planning. No, because you just um, you go with it. It's good. Because you could go up to somebody and go, Fancy coming round tonight, I've got some beers in, have a, have a chat. Oh, I wish you'd have said, I'm going to a party. No, no you're not, no, you're not. What, uh, what? Because there isn't such thing as planning. I'm right. just in the mood, I'm walking okay. down the street. OK. I see you. Yeah. Fancy coming round tonight? No. <laughs> Why not? I need more notice than that, really. Why? Why? I left a chicken out. It's, it's, it goes off okay. tomorrow. And I go along. All right, Steve, are you coming round tonight? He's having chicken with me. Oh. <laughs> well, no, but I didn't know that because you hadn't arranged that. Yeah, you hadn't so arranged it. I've got something it. going on, Rick. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I can't eat a whole chicken. Do you want a chicken? OK. <laughs> and there you go, you see. So my night is better than yours. I'm eating your chicken. <laughs> I'm having a free night out here because there was no planning going on and I'm getting a free night of chicken. What? Now, imagine <laughs> if on the Wednesday like before... <laughs> loses them and has to go and touch them and like reel them back in. Wait, 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 we're not done yet. Wait. <laughs> Chicken. What? Now, like, wait, imagine wait, wait. if on the Wednesday before you like, went... What day is it now? What day was today? Right. Tuesday. So Tuesday, we're all walking down the street. I always okay. get emails from people going, right. are you coming out next week? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. I don't like it. Interesting point of view. I, I was with him on the not enjoying parties and stuff. That's not my thing. It's never been my scene. I've never been interested. Like, the false fun, I can understand that. I personally do not like crowds. I do not like going to crowded places or just, like, people. I've, I'm also quite, I guess, sensitive is the word to, like, sounds. And if people are yelling and there's children screaming and people crying and just, like, I... Don't like that. Like when the when Argentina, you know, won the World Cup and I was filming because I kind of wanted to show you guys. I was so far away from the people. <laughs> I even got comments like nothing's happening. You're just like, that's that's nothing. I'm like, no, I'm far because I do not want to be in the middle of all that. I do not like that. I don't enjoy it. So I kind of just got <laughs> as far as I can, but as close as I can so I can kind of film it. I just don't like that kind of just madness and and that's like a reason I I I don't go to concerts I don't go to anything because I just don't like crowds so I'm with him on that but 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 I am completely the opposite with the planning thing it I I I have I guess in, in my like friend group with my boyfriend in our friend group we have probably the best house I'm guess like the most space for people to come over like where I, I organized several parts of the house and stuff and, and and got several things with the idea always in mind of when friends come over we can do this we got this big table we you know with the chairs we can play cards here and this and that and um so like I always organize it because I like I like my house to be the house where people come over and every once in a while every like 10-15 days try to organize with the group of friends we have to come over, you know, eat dinner, drink, play games, board games, whatever, anything. And um, it's so freaking hard to organize. First of all, it's hard to organize because there's seven of us. And then two of us, two of us seven went off and had a baby, which made it more complicated. But whatever, we can, there, we can do, you know, little subgroups or whatever. But it's really hard to organize because nobody ever can plan anything because of this. <laughs> they live like with a non-plan plan. That one of us, one one of our friends or one of my friends, he's part of like a, 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 a football team or whatever that they know, they, they don't have like a schedule of when they play. They just kind of tell him the day before, all right, tomorrow you're going to play or today you're going to play in a couple hours. So it kind of really screws with his week and he can never like confirm. And I, it just pisses me off so much. Every week I'm asking, are you guys coming over? No, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. And we never get anything done and we never get to see each other because they can't confirm. And it drives me freaking mad. So I'm not with him on that. So planning is like important to me. I need, I, I also need time. I'm like Ricky. I need time to like adjust and organize my life if we're gonna, if we're gonna dedicate one day to this or that or going out or, I need planning. I don't like the spontaneous, let's go 
across the country to camp. No, today, no. <laughs> Give me a month, please. <laughs> Anyway, there you go. That's my rant on that. Hello, I'm Mr. Ashik. Ashik. Nice to meet you, Carlitos. How are you doing? All right, didn't wave back, so that's... They don't know what that means, or they <laughs> hate me already. I don't, I don't know. There you go. You reminded me of Bill Oddy. Just looking at him thinking, I haven't seen the goodies for ages. Help, heavy. You don't want to do it. What? You don't want to do it, Joe. What's that? And then the other baba looked like Jim Morrison. Hang on a minute. World's worst translator ever, by the way. <laughs> I won't be socialising. I don't do that. I've always said you only need seven mates to get you through life. That's it. That's why, you know, I've mentioned Snow White with the midgets. There you go. She had them all covered in seven. Same thing again with friends. I don't want you met a lot of interesting characters. Tell us about your favourites. Who are the ones that stick in the mind? What about Celso in Brazil? Tall and thin and young him. and handsome, the boy from me, but me goes walking in. When he passes, each one he passes goes, oh. I thought he was all right, Celso. How do I look? You know, it's, it's a different, different sort of mate. What was your first thought when he walks out looking like that? <clears throat> Oh, Jesus, what was that? It's just weird. It's like you've had... Uh, Wurzel Gummidge sort of change the head. Change the head. It's a little bit freaky. Why are you referring to Wurzel Gummidge? Why do you make no effort <coughs> to try and speak to people in terms they might understand? What's the chances of him, fell in Brazil, knowing who Wurzel Gummidge is? There's people watching this who won't remember who Wurzel Gummidge is. He just seemed None very remember, sort of... I don't of, even know. Well, well into the arts. <laughs> And it's, it's his mates as well. Marcelo. Marcelo. Nice to meet you. Hi, Carl. How you doing? Welcome to Rio. You're happy. I have never met, sort of met a gay man so gay. It was just that <laughs> voice, that sort of over the top. Nice enough, but I can't see us getting on long term. No. Do you know what? It's a good job I wasn't born gay because I don't know what I'd do. Why not? If you're gay, you'll be loving it, won't you? I wouldn't. Yeah. I don't think I'm suited to it. Why? Just the, the lifestyle. Well, what do you I mean, mean the parties lifestyle? and stuff? Because the lifestyle, the way they, they walk about over there showing off, being quite a Okay, you, you wake up gay tomorrow. <laughs> his little... What's the first thing you do? <laughs> his little gay. face, like. Tomorrow. What's okay. the first thing you do? Do you get a boyfriend or do you play the field? I think you play the field. Yeah, you're gonna are you going to talk the same? Yeah, maybe in time. I suppose things rub off. If I'm knocking about with John Inman's of the world, I'm probably going to start maybe the, a little sort of... Uh, give me something to say. Uh, oh, hello. I haven't seen you for ages. Right, so it'd be a bit different. Maybe the, oh, hello. Right, OK. I haven't seen you for ages. Okay. It'd be little things like that, and people would suddenly go, have you met Carl recently? Sounds different. Or so you go, you go home, you go home, you go, go, your dad goes, all right, so how's it going? Have you been doing any DIY recently? Oh, hello, Dad. I haven't been there for a bit. Mm. Oh, what are you talking about for, Carl? How's Suzanne? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not with her anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is pointless because it's not the life I would choose. OK, but you've woken up gay. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe it then. I'd just go, oh, I feel a bit happier today, don't know why. No, but then you start going, oh, or you go down and you buy a gay magazine, you're flicking through, you're looking at more cock than you've ever seen before in your life and you're loving it. You look down, something's happened. What do you do next? I just wouldn't look at that magazine again. <laughs> no, you're loving it. You go, oh, I can't believe I haven't seen this magazine before. Yeah, but I've seen knobs before. Have you? Yeah. Where? We've seen knobs all the time. Where? In gyms and that. And don't say you don't look, because you do when you're in a gym. This always comes up. Because it's up there. Every time. What if is? you don't look, if you're going like that, that's, that's more of a worry. If you're not happy looking a knob in the face, there's something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you should be comfortable with it. Just, just... There you it's go. a good rule of thumb. <laughs> so, you have always been a big fan of what society would generally term freaks. You know, one of your, okay. your favourite movies is The Elephant Man which is why we were very excited when we sent you to see The Elephant Baba. Oh, yeah, I can see him, yeah, I can see him. Shoes off. 
They were all Living naked there. here, oh. doing stuff. It wasn't as shocking as I thought it would have been. I think the weird thing is, with Elephant Baba, okay, he's, he's different from Elephant Man. Because with Elephant Man, there was a build-up. He's walking about with a sack on his head. You're going, what is under there? I mean, the first thing I always used to worry about, where, where, where he got that hat from, that fitting. <laughs> <laughs> it's a normal cap he had on, Elephant Man. <laughs> Who was that made for? But then he had the sack on top as well, and a little hole. And it, I, I remember watching it as a kid thinking, can I see anything in the hole? And then he takes it off, and he's like, oh, God, that's well weird. Now, with Elephant Baba, mm. It wasn't as weird. Do you know the elephant man? The weirdest bit of it is when he's walking around with a head but with a suit on. Yeah. Because he doesn't match. No. But in India, because he's sat there... If you went to a the tailor front... and they say, have you got anything to go with this? They'd go, not really. Yeah. Whereas with the yeah. fellow in India... <laughs> it sort of goes with it. It goes with it. So it wasn't as shocking. Sure. Yeah. Now, there's the one arm babber who... The fellow who had his arm in the air for 12 years. Well, that's ridiculous. Okay, yeah. From a distance, I thought it looks friendly. It's like he's Not going like that. Good. Like, oh, here's, here's Carl and the camera crew. Oh. I sit down, <laughs> oh. um, two fellas sat next to him, worshipping him. Yeah. They really? loved him, yeah. Yeah. You know, I asked all the normal questions. What are you playing at? Uh, why are you doing it? <laughs> straight in, straight in with what you're playing at. <laughs> I asked all the normal questions, what you're playing at. Right. I agree, though. I agree. What are you playing at? Apparently, yeah. there's other babbers with, like, two arms, one, arm, one foot in the air. Really? It's mental. It's proper mental. But are they standing up or are they laying down with one foot in the air? Well, I suppose if you knock him over, that's it, isn't he? He's down for good. <laughs> <laughs> that, no, that, that's what I was talking about. That's oh, not gosh. what... Another no. fellow with his knob and bollocks on a stick. What are you doing? <laughs> Carl, if you can't Wait. look a knob in the face... <laughs> I was happy looking the knob in the face. It's what he was doing to it. But he was just showing you what? his trick, his party trick. He was... But that probably would get him to the final of Britain's Got Talent. Oh, Amanda Holden would be a huge fan of that, wouldn't she? I, uh Caught around a stick. I mean, I'll never forget it. You can't with the names. The names go with them. It's like old-fashioned names. I don't think you can How they say that. If you were a baker, you'd be known as Mr Baker. That's how names caught on. Yeah. So the fact it's got Elephant Baba and one arm Baba, you don't go, uh, who's that one again? I can't quite picture him. I don't believe they are called Elephant Baba and one-armed Baba. They are called that. When I went around that camp and I was saying to people, one arm Baba knocking about. They were going, yeah, he's about three tenths down. Everyone knew him. It was like a council estate. <laughs> you have nicknames. John the Screw about. Where's Tattoo Stan? It's all the same thing. All these little nicknames. Yeah. Now, if I said where, I don't know his real name, but if he was called, I don't know, Neil or whatever, I mean, Neil about, they'd be going, Neil, who's, who's John's Neil? What's, what, what's, what does he do in the camp? And you go, he's got head like elephant. <laughs> elephant Baba, three, three down. <laughs> so it's convenient. <laughs> The nicknames are convenient. Oh, his little Meaning. face, he's like so done already, <laughs> and we got a long way more. <laughs> There's certain things I've learned. Go Tell on. us what have you learned? I learned that babies in China, a lot of them are square heads. <laughs> <laughs> right, go on. <laughs> Is this, Why? can we look at this clip? He's a big lad. What about you? Has he got a square head? Have a look. Tell. Yeah. But why do they have square heads? I asked some questions, and the main answer seemed to be so they don't roll out the cot. No, <laughs> no way. How do they make sure their baby gets a square head? They, they somehow they stick a book to the back of its head when it's born. When you're born, you're you, your head's soft. Yeah, that's it? right, yeah. Did your mum strap a dinner plate to your head when you were a kid? What yeah, why, what? A ladle. <laughs> but I didn't get all the ins and outs, and this is what I'm saying. But why does that... That doesn't stop them rolling out the cot. If you've got a square head, it's not like they couldn't roll out. Babies' heads... Remember, your head is quite big as a baby. Right. <laughs> the, body's, the body's sort of like that, and its head, it's trying to roll, and it can't, cos it's like that. And it's attractive, apparently... What do you mean? Do it, do it again, again. Do, it again. Do, it, do it again. The baby's in the cot, like that. Very spot on, OK. And it would want to sort of... If so it try had a round head, it so could just go like that. Yeah, so now do it with a square... How, how, how is it stopping it? I don't understand. So do because it with... it's kind of going... You can't roll. What shape is a wheel? Round. <laughs> Some people think you are there a character that we write and direct. If we'd created a character <laughs> as brilliant as this, do you think we'd have flogged it to Sky? Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not. Good little face. There's loads of weird fish, though. I think there's fish in here that I've read about that are so see-through that they're invisible, so I don't even think they know they exist. Because other fish don't go up to it and, like, mate and stuff. I don't know how it works, but they just, it's like they're not there to us or to them. 
We might as well not be there. It's a really weird... I don't know all the facts. Really? If you're invisible, <laughs> you'd eventually get ignored a lot and you'd go, well, there's no point acknowledging anyone because no-one can see me. That bird is don't so well I think that's camouflaged. how it works. Of course it is. Think if you were invisible and I walk past you, I'm going to ignore you because I can't see you. You can't communicate because I'd go, who was that? And eventually you just go, I can't be bothered communicating. So you're just there, floating about, eating. So that's probably why they carry on, because they just eat, they've got nothing else to do. I read it, and I think they're in here, but you're not going to see them, so I can't prove it. <laughs> well, touche, Carl. <laughs> There's people out there who said I'm an actor called Graham. Yeah. I wish I was. I wish I was. Well, change your name to Graham and become an actor. No, because then they go, oh, we knew that. So the reason you're you not out. changing your name to Graham and becoming an actor is that you don't want to give idiots the benefit of the doubt. Well, no, it's also that thing of remembering that you've changed your name. It's like <laughs> I told you, didn't I, when I was a kid and I changed my name to Brett. Everyone in the family went along with it and I kept forgetting. They kept <laughs> shouting me and I was ignoring them. So this isn't working. <laughs> OK. All right, mate. How's How it? are you getting on, man? Uh. Well, I've, I've had better holidays. Um... <laughs> it's not a holiday. I have to keep reminding you, it's not a holiday, my friend. You are making a travel programme for the television. I can never enjoy anything, can I? Oh, no. Get out of the Dead Sea, put some clothes on... Oh, I forgot do... he went to the Dead Sea. The only time they... <laughs> he, like, escaped on his own and had ten minutes to himself. They were already like, no, get it, get that ladder. That's fucking work. Oh, he was at peace shit. with the Dead, well, the dead I've got a little surprise for you. You're spending the night in a cave, Carl. Like that too. What for? It's funny. <laughs> but... But... <laughs> I had some sort of new pudding that I've never had before. <coughs> Carrots with sort of milk and sugar on it. I enjoyed it. I don't know if I'll find it in London. I don't want to watch you eating carrots on the telly! In HD? Even in HD. I reckon I've had about an hour's kit. I am knackered. And I don't know how to get that across to them at home, that I'm pissed off. Oh, oh we understood that. This is for my that amusement. Yeah. And if you're having a bad time, bumping on the down on the camel, with your, your, your testicles being battered, that's good entertainment. This uh, is what I'm giving back. This is what I'm giving back to society. You are my gift to the rest of the world. Poor car. Now, that's the other thing as well, that um, people think that, you know, because I call you a little round-headed chimp-like buffoon, <clears throat> moron, mank, twonk, I could go on. Some people, they mistake that for bullying. Mm. What would you say about people that, say, that me and Steve bully you? If, if they think I am being bullied, what, what are they doing? When have they come to me help? Where's Esther Ranson? Why hasn't she been on the phone? Leave him alone. Nothing's happened. Everyone's saying that. I've seen that everywhere. Carl's being bullied. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm nearly 40. So don't worry about me. <laughs> and two, well, if you're worried about it, do something. <laughs> I've had posted. I have felt this way. <clears throat> I have felt this way on the Ricky Gervais show. Why did I not do anything? Because it's like 16 years later, Carl. <laughs> I think it's over. But, um, delivered to interesting. Me. Worry about it, do something. <laughs> I've had posts delivered to me. And because you say, Carl Pilgrim's got like a fucking orange, people think they can do it. I got some lamps delivered in a box, somebody along the way, I don't know who, either the bloke who packed them, the courier, or I don't know how many people involved in packing lamps and getting them to me, but somebody wrote on the box, head like a fucking orange. <laughs> now, that shouldn't happen. Of course, there were a number of instances Poor where thing. we had planned stuff that you were completely unaware of. In fact, most of the trip, you had very little idea where you were going to go and what was going to happen. I think a highlight for both Ricky and I was when we gave you some very important training Kidnapped. In the event that you were Amazing. captured during I mean, a terrorist that, again, event. that went better than I ever imagined. I felt like he knew, though. Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! Allah Allah Akbar! 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 Allah you did not know they were going to attack you and grab you and drag you in the back of a van. It all went black. Um, I heard a lot of shouting going on. I didn't know what was happening. 
I thought, is this it? Have I been taken hostage? They put my hands behind my back, they put one of those tie things on, it was cutting into my hand, I'm thinking, is this for the programme or what? Because this is proper hurting. It's not, it's not a nice thing, I've never experienced Did that you? They often say in those moments where you think maybe your life's going to come to an end that your whole life flashes before your eyes, is that what happened? No, because uh, like I said to you, I, uh, nothing, I had a bag over my head, I couldn't see a thing. Doctor me! Hang on a minute, I'm t are you Doc English? Dummy. You English? I love the yes, steps, I love the big steps. Who step. are you? <laughs> I love it you when want? you go, who are you? When the adrenaline's <laughs> kicking and you can hardly breathe and you do a posh voice. <laughs> who are you? No, <laughs> because it's terrifying, that, not knowing what's going on. Uh, what is the number of him? He's in my mobile. Well, mobile, what is the number of him? I well, don't know. I, can, I, will, I, I will don't even know me mum and dad's number. <laughs> well, maybe this is part of the setup. I don't know. But my body didn't know, because it was going through the same thing as Terry Waite would have gone through or whoever else had been tied to a radiator. <laughs> Did you learn Next anything from that, though? That was important training to make you able to cope if such a th terrible thing did occur to you. If you go to places that you're in danger of being kidnapped, you're meant to have a code word. So that, when the people who've nicked you right. call up the London office, yeah. Yeah. they go, we've got Ricky, Steve and Carl here. Right. And the London office go, yeah, yeah. Give us your code word. Well, at the time, mm. it was Congress tart. Congress How are you going to slip that into a conversation? No, you don't slip it in. They've got a bag over your head, gun to your head or whatever, tell them you've been kidnapped and you go, Congress tart, and they go, bloody hell, he's been kidnapped. <laughs> Before you know it, the A-team's coming in. <laughs> right, so, uh, um, ring, ring. Hello, car mate, how's it going? Congress tart. <laughs> what? Congress tart. Rick, okay. who's on the phone, mate? Uh, it's, uh, it's Carl, he said Congress tart, so he's definitely been kidnapped. Who are they, what do they want? Right. Who am I talking to now? Because Them, not... ask them. What do you want? He's asking what you want. Well, there's no-one here to do that bit of role-playing, so maybe you should tell me what they're saying. They said, um, they just said they, they want to use me as bargaining power. But what do they but want? What do they want? We'll we... But what do you actually want? <laughs> oh. What would they want? Is it money? <laughs> Give them money, money. OK, money. Million, uh, two, five million pounds. Too much. I'm not spending that sort of cash. <laughs> I've worked hard no, you for don't this. do that. I, I'm not spending that cash. See, this is what worries me. I'm not spending this five million to get you back. Crazy. That's what's worrying. No. Because that's what would have happened. Can't we negotiate? Put, the, put them on. Yeah, here's Ricky. Right, you've got to play him as well, though. Oh. Hello? Hello. Who's that? Never mind who it is. Where's me five million? Can't afford five million at the moment. We're going to kill this kid if um, you don't kid, give us the five million. How, you, how can We're you getting him sick of him. Why, why? What's he doing? He's just shouting Congress tart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, that is great. Um, but uh, that face also, I put pause because it reminds me of a story that came out years ago, years ago. They, um, I don't remember where this was, I guess in the United States. Don't know what state or what area or whatever. But there was a whole, like, bit of news, actual news, like, good sources, actual news, where they kidnapped from, you know, uh, when school was out or whatever, they kidnapped the little kid. <laughs> I don't know how old he was. He was, like, seven, six. So it, was, it was a small kid, and they kidnapped him, and the kid just started singing, like, I think it was gospel songs or just like, you know, <laughs> like completely re religious music off the top of his lungs and would not shut up. They could not get him to shut up. And it was just like that. I can't stand him. <laughs> That's what reminded me. And they ended up like letting him go because they just, they couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> and basically, yeah. Congress tart. That's it. Him. That was great. Why, why? What's he doing? He's just shouting Congress tart. <laughs> <laughs> Give him the money. Give us the money. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't have got him to call you, actually. There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> okay, let's have a break. Oh, God! <laughs> oh, God! It's not really a dance, is it? It's 
like a little bit of a shuffle, really. It's just that, not really, uh, not using, not even adding, not even adding that sort of thing to it. Right. Just a bit more with the face, even. <laughs> I never understood if this man liked that dancing sort of old or man not, because I've heard both versions. You know, when old men are sort of a bit pissed up and the pants have fallen down a bit. Sort of that, that pissed up walk. But, you know, he killed a bit of time. There was nothing else to watch. And I was tempted to sort of add, sort of join the line and then do that and see if they copy it and then that would be me giving them something. And then is that interfering? Maybe it wouldn't look frightening by the time, you know, if another tribe came in and they all stood over there looking like Lionel Blair, you know, they're just going to go, right, let's get them, we can handle these. I mean, I'm so jealous of you being in the Peruvian jungle. That was such a weird... Didn't you have a whale of a toy? Scene. Um, fucking hell. I want to go home. People watching it will sort of go, eh, but, you know, I've seen all this. Rain maze and Bear grill sucking on elephant shit and all that. It's hard to let people know how bad it is yeah. out there. When I came out of there... You made an effort, though. I'd, I'd had no phone signal. Five days, no phone signal stuck in the jungle, the Amazonian jungle, in a one-man tent and then with a tribe for a couple of days. Called Suzanne up and said, all right, I'm safe and all that, expecting to get, like, a hero's welcome. All I got was, oh, uh, it's, it's reassured me that if you died, I'd be all right. That's what she said. For 16 years I've been with her. Not a day's gone by when I haven't spoke to her at some point. She turns around and says that. I'd be all right if you were dead. All right, cheers for that. I've got to call Ricky now. I called you awful. up. So I had a meeting with everyone, and they weren't sure about the title, Carl Pilkington, Seven Wonders. Um, I came up with an idea they really liked, then pushed it through, wanted to run it by you. Um, I think you're abroad. Well, no, we didn't, we, didn't say any, we didn't say anything about that. We said it's Carl Pilkington, Seven Wonders. Hello? Yeah, but oh, I thought he hung they, up. they were saying, you know, who's Carl Pilkington? Yeah, well, who's, who's the idiot abroad? The next... What? You're the idiot abroad. They loved it. They absolutely loved it. Yeah, well, they would, cos you interview. said it. You know what they're like? They all sit there going, oh, yeah, that's great, Ricky, yeah, yeah. We'll do that. We're not having an idiot abroad. It's Carl Pilkington Seven Wonders. I've been through a load of shit here. <laughs> You're sat there giving them bloody shit titles. <laughs> We're not having an idiot abroad. We're not having it. It's the one, one thing that I said uh, that I'm happy with. I've got a, I don't want people thinking I'm a div. Who was in the meeting? Just the producers and uh, me and Steve and all the people from Sky and marketing. <laughs> Everybody. And I loved it. Like, as soon as I came up with it, I started writing it down. So. <laughs> How did Carl lose everywhere? Like, at everything? He even lost at the title, the places, the hotels, everything. And I love how there was a point where he's like, no, 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 okay, no season two, <clears throat> this is it. He was just done with it. How did they, how did they convince him the season two is just amazing, to me. How like he just, he was fed up with everything, everything. I don't understand how how this continued. And there's season three, so very interesting. Well, I'm back in a in a couple of days. We'll we'll have another little meeting about that. Let's have another little meeting. Was they all, all croissants then, free coffee? Was they all sat around on their arse? Yes, that's great, Ricky. Any other ideas? Pour us another coffee. I'm sick of that lot. Tell them now, call them now, and tell them that we're not doing series two. Nip that in the bud. I'm not doing any more. That's, that's yeah, you are. That. We are. Do some more. People love it. Do some more. I've had enough no, of that now. I've people... done that. I've had enough. No, let's do... come on. Let's think of something else you can do. Series two. What about this? We're not going to sort that out today. Idiot abroad. Fool's gold. I give you a million to spend, and you've got one year to make two million. I've got a double a million. Yeah. You can, you can gamble, you can put it all on a horse, or you can put a little bit on a horse. You go to Dragon's Den. You I go, like how I've got an idea. Actually Clip considering mug. the idea. What about the tie with, like, you can carry scissors in and oh, stuff? It's already out there. Is it? Yeah. What, was you, what was the first thing you'd do with that? If I said you've got, you've got a year to make... One million, and you've already got this million. Just do loads of stuff. Well, then, go on, then. What's the first thought? What do you do? Antiques and um, buy antiques, flog them on, art. 
Right. Or buy a house in Bulgaria. What do you know about... Whoa, 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 whoa. You're going to buy a house in Bulgaria. That's your first thought. How much is the house in Bulgaria? 100 grand. Right. How much do you want to sell it for? I'm going to sell it for 200. I'm going to do it all. You're going to double your money on a house Easy. within a year. Easy. You've got to make 130. Oh, yeah, I'm spinning plates here. This is Go on, what else are you So you've got to keep flying to Bulgaria to yeah, check on I've the I've got the local builders on it. Right. In right. Bulgaria? Yeah. Plate spinning. Right. Antiques on the go. I'm buying What's scratch antiques? cards. You're buying scratch I'd cards? I buy a load of scratch How cards. How many? 5,000 scratch cards. Right. I'd have some kids doing that. I'd say, right, you can have a fiver. Um, You're giving you it all to... Oh, I haven't right. got time. I'm giving this, it them to do. This is the worst idea I've ever heard. That my my, my million's gone, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's I mean, I'm just... It hasn't. If you've got money, you make money. That's a fact. Where is Bulgaria? Really, it's somewhere okay. I know Bulgaria is good for property. I've seen right. a lot of property programs. Do you That's mean what I do. I just no, no, no. There's a lot of play things that you can do with property, antiques. I'm what buying else? classic cars and doing them up. <laughs> so you're doubling your money on a classic car in a year? I'm, yeah, but I've made stuff, I've made inventions. What have you done? I do the Dragon's Den. Like you say, the clip on that idea. Like, you have your cup there, but look at that saucer. Every time I have a cup. Have a little bit of tea. I'm talking to you. I've got to go like that. I've got to look exactly where I'm putting it again. Right. The clipper will mat is stuck on. It's, it's attached to it at all times. That's ridiculous. I'm to you. How's it going? And if what? I want, I don't have to put it down there. I can put it down there. I'm not limited as to the surface that I can put it on. It's attached. It's washerproof. Dishwasher proof. It's an idea. I am out. <laughs> what is that? It's an idea. I am out. <laughs> Fuck me, so am I. <sighs> okay. That would have been kind of... I don't know, I, I imagine the premise of season two is exactly the same as season one, but that kind of would have been fun because... to see how much he lost. Because <laughs> I don't think he's Dublin, I don't think he's even close to Dublin, but I imagine he would lose a lot. So I'm kind of curious now, especially with those weird plans, how much he would have lost. Most of the world is grim. Louis Armstrong did that What a Wonderful World song. I don't know what he's going on about. If Louis had seen what I'd seen, he wouldn't have brought that out. Well, Carl, you talked a lot before you went on the trip about how probably your happiest holiday time was when you were younger. Where were you used to go? Wales. Wales. Port Maddock. Right. Year after year after year. It was brilliant. And why was it so great? It's everything you want. It's a good, like, you know, it was a good holiday park. Right. Weather was good. I had loads of mates there. There was always kids knocking about who I got on with. Arcade, beach. Oh, is this the campsite? It was with Elves Arcade? Angels down one end. Mm. Um, and I remember watching them thinking, I want to be one of them. I want to be a Hells Angel. Because they looked hard, all the leather on and that. Isn't that the point? And, uh, I don't know, you see, this again, this might not be true, but my mum told me it might have just been to put me off. She said, to be a hell's angel, you've got to shit in your pants. <laughs> I love your mum giving you a <laughs> So shit in your pants and keep them on for a week. <laughs> and keep them? Oh, wow. So, uh, <gasps> yeah, my dad said my auntie Nora could have joined then. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, my dad said my auntie Nora could have joined then. But, uh... <laughs> so, what you're saying is that you have nothing but happy memories of your glory days I loved it. back in Wales. And, you know, you were whinging when we were sending you on these trips. You were like, oh, I had a great time back in Wales, blah, blah, blah. Well, we sent you back to Wales. Let's have a look how you got on. Every holiday we had, we'd go to this place in Wales, this campsite. Mum and Dad's got a caravan there. It's designed, it's high tech. I want you to experience it. It's all right, isn't it? This is good, isn't it? So you don't have of space for stuff and that. Big fire. Oh, like, OK. Three bedrooms, it's Like every it's campsite should have. Now, what's good is, normally, say if um, your gran comes in, Oh, I didn't know your whole family's coming. Where can I stay? You just go, hang on. Watch how quick this is. <laughs> no, that isn't one. Hang on. <laughs> hang on. You I'm stay so there. <laughs> there you go. Uh, 
that's mighty quick. I was thinking I have never seen a pullout bed come from a, an individual like couch chair. How small is that bed gonna? It's like it's a cot. It's not even a bed. I was. <laughs> I'm so glad there wasn't one because first of all, he looked like a dumbass, which is always fun. But second of all, I was thinking like. That's horrible, <laughs> especially with the bigger couch next to it. Those are hard to pull out. I used to sleep on one. That last bit, that last pull is like a very specific sort of... kind of pull to get it out. And to That's put it not back. right, is it? Nope. <laughs> well, she can just sort of, you know. Weigh it down. <laughs> oh, man. I remember getting chicken pox when I was here. I just sat in the bath with a load of salt. Stop a mitching. Uh, Never heard that before. I burnt my hand badly. Joan Rossi was with us on holiday and she gave me a plate with sausage rolls on it. And she handed it to me with a tea towel. I just grabbed the plate, stuck to me hand. A lot of injuries happened here, really. Well, if you spent a lot of time there, yeah. Some people next door. This totally reminds me of, um, of where Maeve lives in Sex Education, where she lives, like, looks exactly like that with like little hills around and everything. They get annoying. It looks so similar. They've put us right next to a family of 12 or whatever and they seem to sort of be out there all night. They've got a table there with all sorts. Game of Monopoly. You don't have a quick game of that. You know what I mean? They're, they're there for the night now. Your company now. If I was there, I'd be quite happy sat here. I'd probably put the telly on, have a cup of tea or something, relax. But because you're here going, what do you do now? What do you do now? It's like I've got to try and Impress you. Entertain. What's wrong with just sitting here now? The air's coming in. They're getting on my tits. <laughs> oh, he used to come to do crabbing. That doesn't look well, it's like a, a nice bit of a ropey day to today, isn't it? Honestly. See, this isn't. I don't really want Ricky and Steve to see it like this. Things broke. We go back. It's been a bit rubbish, hasn't it? You, you remember things oh, been better rubbish. when you're a kid, right? <laughs> I don't know. Is it because I've changed? Better than they actually Is it because I've been around the world and seen other things and then seeing this doesn't doesn't work anymore? I've a sort of messed up the fact that I used to like simple things and now, you know. Now you're craving toast. Suzanne books holiday, I'll be going, never mind. Forget having to swim in a pool. Where's the local tribe? One of my ambitions for the series, I mean, I know Ricky's got his own agenda, but I was hoping that, you know, maybe travel would broaden the mind. That's the phrase that we hear. Do you feel Brought now in. the dust has settled like a different Carl? You're saying about the broadening of the mind, I've put more stuff in the mind. Right. And whenever you do that, something has to go, doesn't Why it? Why does well, something have to go? No, no. Um, it's a so mind. There's, everything's only got a certain amount of space. There's never an endless supply. Even with computers, they go, oh, disk space full or whatever. It's the same with the brain. But when and I learn a new fact, in. I don't have to make room. I don't have to go, right, I've got to chuck some out. I've got to chuck some out now. Of course you do. <laughs> Why is he so confused? Unless you're Stephen Hawking, who's got it all on hard drive, <clears> you can't just go, oh, where's that thing? Where's that thing that, that I want to remember? You might go, oh, I remember knowing something like that before when you were talking about bananas. Now, I had that fact about if you eat more than six, it can kill you. No, that's definitely not, that's <laughs> not a fact. It is a that, fact. No, it's not a Potassium fact. Potassium levels are dangerously high if you have six bananas. Now, I didn't, I, when I walked in here today, I wasn't going, let's tell Ricky about the banana fact. I went in that place you're having makeup on, I saw a bowl of bananas, I said, there's six bananas there, you know why there's only six? Seven would be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> this all happened. What fact squeezed out of your brain to accommodate the banana information? I don't know, because I forgot it. Perfect. Of course. The Monster Munch. OK. I see trees of green. <laughs> 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 
they're such jerks that they they put this song. I think he enjoyed the Shaolin stuff. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Is that someone with goals? The lights are changing. Lights, lights, lights. A load of bees are here. That, that. <laughs> that was so random. A load of bees are here. <laughs> that part was so great because he was just like walking off all mad and it was just so <laughs> random. <laughs> Not a bee is here. He's anywhere safe. Oh, man. That's a testicle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marcelo. Marcelo. Not bad. OK. Uh, uh, Jesus. <laughs> OK, now. <laughs> this guy had, like, so many highs and so many lows in this. I'm not putting myself above my station, eh? I thought it was going to be the new paling. What? Thing found. I thought it was going to be the new paling. Thing found out. I didn't know much, but then I put myself out to learn a bit more. It's been a journey. People watching it have been on my journey. What a journey it was. Everything I've been through, they've seen. Almost, but yeah. I mean, they say travel broadens the mind, but I don't know if it does. Buggers it up. I'm knackered. <laughs> so I'm curious, because I imagine I'll, I'll discover it. I'm, I'm, this isn't a question I'm not asking you guys to answer. I imagine some will, but again, it's not a question. But I kind of i am I'm wondering where, like, where the choices to send him new places are, because these are the seven wonders. Which is like very specific, and I'm just—is it just like random next time? All right, you're gonna go. Where can I send him to make him super miserable? <laughs> oh, here. So, kind of want to see that. But um, this is fun. This is—I had several like questions throughout the series that were answered here. Uh, you know, the title was fun to learn about, and I—I uh, <laughs> I guess. I don't know why he didn't have a say and he just had to do season two. All right, fine. And um, I don't know, there's several things I learned which were nice. What he was thinking, like I, I was wondering when he got kidnapped, like I was sure he had to imagine that it was part of the show and he said he did. Like there th there's several variables or several questions I, I've been asking and, and lots of answers. So that's nice, definitely fun. I kind of wanted to see Ricky Gervais reaction like first time watching some of the, like the clips or the scenes or when he was in China or, or just certain like very key moments I wanted to see his first time watching because they like showed it there like they were watching it or whatever and they have already seen they, it's already been edited it's been done it had music it's it was it was a done deal I kind of want to see his first reaction even whether Steven was there or not, I just wanted, like, just how proud he must have been of himself <laughs> with the whole project and just, like, how, every, how everything came together. I just kind of wanted to see that. And I thought I was going to maybe see a little wee bit of that, but I guess not. But excellent, excellent, excellent. And um, now, next, soon, season two. I am excited. I am excited, and I cannot wait so I will see when I can get that done. But for now, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And um, this kind of, I never really traveled much, but this kind of made me want to travel. 
not to where he's been <laughs> and not to you know situations he got himself into but act actual nice places you know pretty places so anyway guys thank you so much toodles and i will be around